No-till gardening is probably the least strenuous but most effective method of gardening you can possibly do. But what is it? In more traditional forms of gardening, it's very common to actually work through and completely till the soil to have a clean slate to work in. Talk about backbreaking. The main goal with that is to uproot all of the weeds and make sure nothing is gonna grow in its place. But with no-till gardening. Rather than uprooting everything and tilling the soil, we are going to aerate the soil, put a layer of biodegradable material on top, and just lay a layer of compost or soil or worm castings or whatever you want to garden. It's so much less work and a lot more fun. And most importantly, no-till gardening actually protects the composition and ecology of the soil, which is what we want. The health of your soil is the most important thing when it comes to gardening. Now let me show you how I do it. I am currently in the process of extending this plot outward. And as you can see, it's already home to quite a few of the native plants. And if I'm going to plant in here, these native plants are going to make it very challenging for any other plants to establish themselves because they're going to be competing with these plants for survival. Now, rather than going in and tilling and uprooting and working the soil and breaking my back, I'm actually just going to place a layer of biodegradable weed barrier on top to kill things off in a much more easier way. The first step in no-till gardening is we're actually going to open up and aerate the soil in the area that we're going to garden in. This is going to help bring oxygen into the soil and it's also going to help invigorate the microorganisms. We're going to wake them up so that they can get to work. And trust me, this is a lot better than completely uprooting them. So to do this, we're just going to poke some holes in the ground. Put your handy dandy pitchfork in. And then once we are pretty deep into the ground, we're actually going to lift just a little bit to open up the soil. Ooh, I want to show you up close. See how the soil is opening up? That is exactly what we want, but we don't want to completely turn it over. Just open it up, get some oxygen into the ground. And then we pull out. Now we just have to do it everywhere. <laughs> All right, for the purposes of the video, I'm gonna be working in this part of the bed. I'm not about to do the whole thing. Ain't nobody got time for that right now. <laughs> but as you can see, this soil has been lifted and it has been aerated. All right, so this next step isn't absolutely necessary, but I just find it helpful. I like to moisten the soil so that whatever is going to break down underneath that biodegradable layer that we're gonna add, it's gonna help it break down a little faster and we just like moist soil. And I just want it moist, not so moist. All right, time for the next step. So I think this step is probably the most important step in no-till gardening. Um, we're actually going to cover the area that we have aerated with some biodegradable weed barrier. Today, I'm gonna to be using cardboard. You can also use newspaper. Just make sure that whatever biodegradable material you use, if it has like ink um, or any writing on it that it's a soy-based ink, most newspapers and cardboards are printed with soy-based ink, so it'll biodegrade just fine without any damage to the soil. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay our cardboard down over the area that we're working in to create a weed barrier. This is gonna do a few things. One, it's gonna block sunlight from the weeds, which will essentially kill them off. Two, this is fascinating. Because the weeds are going to die off, they're gonna break down and essentially become goodness and nutrients for the soil again. So you're essentially feeding life back into the soil by doing this. And three, this one's really cool too, worms are actually really attracted to carbon-based materials like paper. So they're actually really attracted to the cardboard. So it's actually gonna pull quite a few of them to this area and it's just gonna be a factory of work that's going on underneath the soil. Super cool, let's do it. We do run a nursery business and we go through a lot of boxes. So it's a really great way to recycle and repurpose your cardboard. There you go, our cardboard is laid. And I use bricks to weigh it down so it doesn't blow away while I move on to the next step. Now we're gonna soak it. We're gonna get it really damp and really wet. When we apply the layer of compost and worm castings over the cardboard, the fact that it's wet is gonna help it break down much, much easier and a lot more quickly. 
Awesome, our cardboard is nice and damp, so now we can add our soil. Now I'm actually gonna be adding two mediums here. I'm gonna be adding a layer of compost and then finishing it off with a layer of worm castings. This is really gonna ensure that there is more than enough goodness so that everything that I plant has everything that it needs to grow. <sighs> Oh my God. We are all done laying our soil. Now that was a lot of work, but you cannot tell me that that was more work than tilling. It is definitely worth it. Now, I feel like the true final step would be to apply a layer of mulch to help retain moisture within the soil and help protect the soil from the harsh UV rays from the sun but I'm actually not gonna apply my mulch until after I plant, because I feel like it's easier to apply mulch around plants rather than move mulch around to plant. That's just personal preference. You don't have to do it that way. It's really up to you. Oh my gosh, guys, we are all done. I am so excited. I cannot wait to start planting in this bed. What's really fascinating about using the cardboard, you know, you can use a spade and actually carve out a hole in the cardboard where you're going to be planting things so that the roots can reach that deeper earth um, and still get all that sustenance from the medium we added on top. Now, if you're concerned about the cardboard and how long it'll take for it to biodegrade, just to put it into perspective, we actually did this for this entire bed last year and the cardboard has completely deteriorated and is now part of the soil. So it really doesn't take that long. Something else that's really fascinating about the no-till method is that you can actually use it in a variety of ways. As you saw with that last bed, we made a plot directly into the soil and we were able to apply the no-till method there, but we even applied the no-till method for our raised beds. We carved out a trench on the outskirts of this bed where we were going to place the, the wooden frame. But once we dug in the frame, the center was still very exposed and green and full of weeds. Um, so we practiced the no-till method. I aerated the soil, I added cardboard, and then we placed our medium on top of that. And it's no surprise that year after year, we have had amazing yields because we have protected that ecology within the soil. You know, the cardboard killed off those weeds and brought those nutrients back into the soil and our microorganisms were left intact. Y'all, I really cannot stress enough how important it is that we protect the health within our soil. And that's why I'm obsessed with the no-till gardening method. I really hope this helps y'all out. Let me know if you give it a try.